This is the start of the super wide version of the Polaroid Super Shooter and Color Pack pinhole camera conversion. In this segment, I'll completely strip down the camera and then chop 36 millimeters off the front end so that we can recap it to make our super wide pinhole Polaroid camera. All right, just as I showed you in part one, remove the timer, the battery compartment, lens and shutter, steel clips, and the two pins on the face. Make sure your front is flush. In addition to those pieces, we're going to take off the viewfinder. Grab the eye cup by a corner and peel it off. That will expose a little staple. Take your small screwdriver and work it under it and pry it out. Put a finger over it because that will fly. Tilt your viewfinder forward to remove it. Take out the plastic piece and that little spring inside. To make the camera easier to handle for our next steps, take the back off. You do that by very carefully lifting the corner up over the hinge pin. Before drawing our cut line, I'm going to clip off the first four millimeters of the viewfinder bracket. This will make it easier for drawing the line and cutting later. This will be for marking the cut line on the front camera body. Take a piece of cardstock about five and a half by eleven centimeters, fold it in half, and make mark about 36 millimeters. Punch a hole in it. Take a white china marker or fabric marker, push that through. To make your cut line, place your marker on a surface and the camera body face down and rotate the camera body around the marker. As an aid in cutting, I'll take three layers of white art tape or masking tape and split them. Then lay those pieces along my cut line. The idea being the raised edge will help guide the saw. Cutting or chopping the camera body is probably the most enduring part of this whole project. Of course, the easiest would be to take a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and trim it that way. However, <laughs> however, I wanted to show you that this could be done with a razor saw. With a firm hold on your camera body, take your razor saw and start off very slow. You can rock it a little to get to follow the contour of the body cap. Once you get a groove going, then you can pick up some speed. If you need to, walk away from it. It just takes a patience. And if you need to stop, take a break. Remove all the masking tape. Most of your imperfections in cutting can be removed by taking a full sheet of sandpaper and sanding the whole surface. So 
all right if you keep losing a little depth. It's pinhole. It doesn't have to be perfect. Later, we're going to have some pieces glued here. Let's take a piece of medium grade and scratch up that surface on the inside, right near the, the lip of the cap. if you wanted you could also wash it. This is a piece of the Electromax double black. It's about nine and a half centimeters square. I'm going to place my camera on top of it and draw a complete outline or in this case I guess an inline of the camera. Like so very carefully cut along the edge of that line. Not all the way through, we're only going to go about one half to two thirds of the way through. But follow that contour all the way around the camera, or all the way around your outline. You can even take the, the cap that you cut off for the camera and use it as a guide to help follow the contour. Once you feel you've cut halfway through the board and are all the way around, very carefully go to the corner and start peeling up layers. is creating a ledge for a snug fit on our camera body. Before I adhere this to the body, I'm going to cut out the pinhole portal. Draw an X from corner to corner. That X will mark the center point for our pinhole portal. The pinhole opening for this camera should be 10 by 14 millimeters. And I'm going to clip off these corners. I'll make it easier later when we recut the contour. Take your white art tape or masking tape and remask the front of the body. and cut it flush.